And in, in the whole world, um, I, I guess, is now in a tightening phase, uh, Jason. Uh, it's, it's probably as simple as that. I, I we say wouldn't do it all like within hours. We, you know, uh, we did Wednesday, then they did, then we got the BOE, then we got the ECB. Everybody's tightening. It's just a fact of life, and we did like that cheap money for a long time. Yeah, it's it's raining rate hikes actually, as it turns out in 2022, <laughs> right? And uh, ruining ruining everyone's World Cup watching. So what? <laughs> it's the fun police from the Fed in 2022. I think it's worth noting a few things. Um, one. We actually think we're much closer to the end of that than the beginning. So does the Fed, for what it's worth. And the likelihood that you could see rate cuts in 2023 will really be the story that you look forward to then. Um, one other note, it is global for sure, other than in China, which is a different story. Uh, what you saw in the ECB today, or yesterday, excuse me, um, was that when you're really, really late, like the Fed was sort of late, um, you run into the situation where inflation is so high that even when you start to predict recession, um, you still have to raise rates. So that's the real fun police. That's the nightmare scenario for anyone that invests in, in anything is stagflation. And I th I, I, it's, a, you know, it's the worst portmanteau that, that we've got in terms of combining two words. It, it's, all you got to do is think about what's perfect for stocks, low interest rates, solid growth and low inflation. What's the opposite of that? That's where we are right now. So, I, I mean, what is that, where does that put the S&P when it's all said and done, in, in your view, Jason? So I think, again, 2022 has really been a story about adjusting to the new rate picture. If you, if you turn back the clock, the way back machine, to all of a year ago, we were at zero, right? We were at zero all the way through the March. So this has been an incredible adjustment period and extremely painful. Now what you have to think about when you think about, say, a year ahead S&P forecast is really where our earnings are going to be. So for us and for me, there's a, a real probability of recession. That's actually consensus. Uh, but I don't really think you're going to get sort of a 10 times or 12 times multiple. I think it could actually stay a little bit higher. Um, and we've done a lot of adjustments. So I don't think you see a crash from here. Uh, but it is going to be quite choppy as we adjust to an earnings picture as opposed to, say, uh, a rates picture or multiples picture. Jason, is it possible that, that, that the Fed or, or, or Jay Powell realizes that, that what he says can be very effective? And, and if he talks about staying uh, at, at a higher level longer, that maybe we, we don't need to get there? Do you think in the, in the back of his mind he really believes we get to where he's talking about? Or, or is it all about you know, sort of body language. I remember, you remember the bazooka in, in your pocket, you never need to use it that, that Hank Paulson talked about, but you, you got to have it in reserve. I mean, words can mean a lot. Does j Powell really believe we're going above five or even 6%? Well, the Fed actually seems to believe that we are going to five and a, a, a bit above five. And the real news for me from the Fed was the adjustment of the dots, of course. The statement was exactly pretty much identical. Um, but you went from having very few uh, uh, Fed uh, governors and, and voters believe that you were going to be above 5% at the end of the next year uh, in September to having the vast majority 17 of 19. So that's a big adjustment. Uh, I don't think the Fed believes they're going to have to go much further than this. Um, and that's, again, part of their rhetoric. I think what they exactly are doing, as you say, it's a lot of performance art, right? We, we yeah. didn't care about the statement. Okay. The statement wasn't different. We yeah. cared about the presser. Right. When a small business goes to get a loan, I'd prefer that, you know, you didn't have to go as far as they said you were going to go. I wonder, are, are you as, uh, as worried about inflation being deeply ingrained into this economy as the Fed is? Because that's the other thing. They, they didn't think it was deeply ingrained for a long time. Suddenly, oh, my God, now it's like never going to go. I, that, that makes me wonder. You didn't know then. How do you know now necessarily? Is the labor market that different this time around, Jason? So I, I don't think it is. And, and for sure, the, the transitory, the word transitory, uh, what, what uh, Powell is trying to fight right now is to have that be in the first paragraph of his obituary, right? So fighting that really hard, and, and frankly, reasonably so. What you're seeing in inflation dynamics, which again, we got great data on just recently, is actually it's, it's rolling over in goods. The real question is wages and services. What you saw right. in the retail sales number, 
was those are rolling over. What you see in PMIs, leading indicators, is those are rolling over. The big problem the Fed has is jobs are, one, a lagging indicator, two, part of their mandate, and three, very politically sensitive.